हेलो एवरीवन होप यू आर डूइंग गुड वेलकम बैक टुडे लेट अस स्टडी अबाउट रिफ्लेक्टर एंटेनास रिफ्लेक्टर एंटेनास आर बेसिकली हाई गेन एंटेनास दैट हैव बीन इन यूज इन सम फॉर्म और अनदर सिंस द डिस्कवरी ऑफ इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक वेव प्रोपेगेशन इन 1888 बाय हर्ट्ज हाउएवर the fine art of analyzing and designing reflectors of many various geometrical shapes did not forge ahead until the days of world war 2 when numerous radar applications evolved subsequent demands of reflectors for use in radio astronomy microwave communication and satellite tracking resulted in spectacular progress in the development of sophisticated analytical and experimental techniques in shaping the reflector surfaces and optimizing illumination over their apertures so as to maximize the gain the use of reflector antennas for deep space communication such as in the space program and especially their deployment on the surface of the moon resulted in reflector antennas being a household word during the 1960s these reflector antennas are probably the most widely used high gain antennas they can easily achieve gain of about 30 db for microwave frequencies and higher to before we get into other geometrical configurations of reflector antennas i would like to share with you a facility that india takes pride of the national center for radio astronomy has set up a unique facility for astronomical research using meter wavelength range and radio spectrum known as giant meter wave radio telescope that is gmrt this is a picture of gmrt reflector antennas on your screen GMRT is located at a site about 80 kilometers north of Pune and comprises of 30 fully steerable gigantic parabolic dishes of 45 meter diameter each spread over a distance of 25 kilometers At the time GMRT was built it was world's largest interferometric array Even today GMRT attracts various researchers from wo- from world over to conduct their astronomical research Let us now look at the geometric construction of reflector antennas The reflector antennas basically comprise of two components one is the reflector and the other is the feed antenna the simplest type of reflector is a plane reflector the plane reflector which is introduced to direct energy in the desired direction in this case we have a feeding dipole antenna which basically has a normally directional radiation pattern behind this dipole antenna a large sheet flat sheet or what we call as a plane reflector is placed so the desired direction of radiation is in the forward direction 
and all electromagnetic waves are reflected in this desired direction. In the first case, we see that there is a large flat sheet working as a reflector and basically it is reducing the backward radiation. Now we also observe that there is a small distance of separation between the reflector and the dipole that is present in, in front of it. Now the polarization of the radiating source and its position relative to the reflecting surface can be used to control the radiating properties. Now what radiating properties can be controlled? One is pattern, that is the radiation pattern. Secondly, impedance. Third, directivity. Okay. Basically, by maintaining this spacing, let's call that spacing as S, S can be used to control these three radiating properties of the overall system. Now, the desirable properties of the sheet reflector may be largely preserved with the reflector reduced in size. See, practically, we need to understand that bigger the size of the reflector, bulkier is the antenna. So, if I can manage to reduce the size of the reflector, but at the same time, I can continue to have the same radiation characteristics such as the one with the large flat sheet. That is a condition which is more desirable. And that leads to small flat sheet reflectors. So the same dipole antenna can be placed in front of a small flat sheet and achieve the same or similar radiation characteristics. Here the sheet has degenerated in uh, further you see that the sheet has de regenerated into a thin reflector element that you see here. Okay. Whereas the properties of a large sheet of case 1 are, you know, kind of maintained even with a thin reflector. Now, what is that characteristic that is affected by reduction of the size of the reflector from a large sheet to a small sheet? towards a thin sheet. Here it has to be noted that the properties of a large sheet are relatively insensitive to small frequency changes. Whereas the thin reflector element such as this is highly sensitive to frequency changes. So this is a very important point that one has to remember while designing reflector antennas. Reflector antennas take many geometrical configurations, some of them being most popular such as the plane reflector or the corner reflector and curved reflectors. Basically, the curved reflectors are parabolic reflectors. So, let us now move forward to discuss more about 
corner reflectors. To better collimate the energy in the forward direction, the geometrical shape of the plane reflector itself must be changed so as to prohibit radiation in the back and side directions of the antenna. One arrangement which accomplishes this task consists of two plane reflectors joined so as to form a corner like what you see here. You have two plane sheets joined so as to form a corner like what you see here. This is known as the corner reflector. Because of its simplicity in construction, it has many unique applications. For example, if the reflector is used as a passive target for radar or communication applications, it will return the signal exactly in the same direction as it received it and when, it, when its included angle, that is alpha, is 90 degrees, it has maximum reception towards itself. This is geometrically illustrated in this particular figure. You see that maximum reception, it has maximum reception in the direction of itself because of this alpha being 90 degrees. Because of this unique feature, military ships and vehicles are designed with minimum sharp corners to reduce their detection by enemy radar. Like for example, if you look at this, okay, now these are called as passive corner or retro refractors. Now, if I keep it exactly 90 degrees, then I receive the signal and I transmit the signal in the same direction. So, if I have a 90 degrees joint in on an aircraft such as this, then I have the incoming radar signals to detect my position or my existence as an aircraft. It hits the 90 degree angle, okay, and it will return back in the same direction towards the which I have received the signal. So, this makes it possible for someone to detect the aircraft. Whereas, if I do not maintain it at 90 degrees, then I can evade detection like what you see in this case. In most practical applications, the included angle, that is angle alpha, formed by the plates is usually 90 degrees. However, other angles are sometimes used. The feed element of a corner reflector, that is what you see here, in this case it's a dipole, it's almost always a dipole. The feed element is always placed parallel to the vertex at a distance S away. This is the distance S away and you see that the dipole is placed parallel to the vertex. To maintain a given system efficiency, the spacing between the vertex and the feed element, okay, that is this S, must increase as the included angle alpha of the reflector decreases.
that is S must increase as alpha decreases. Also, it is important for us to choose the right kind of the feed element. Now, it should be noted that greater bandwidth can be obtained when the feed elements are cylindrical in nature. That means the dipole is cylindrical, the one that is shown here is cylindrical, rather than using thin wire dipoles. Okay. Now, another very important point that one should remember while constructing a reflector antenna, specifically a corner reflector antenna, is the type of reflector. At lower frequencies, as we understand, the size of the antenna will be larger. So, in such cases, one should ask a question that will I use at lower frequencies, will I use a large sheet, metal sheet as a reflector, corner reflector or can I in some way reduce the bulkiness of the corner reflector by not using a sheet metal. See, only way to take care of this is to use a grid of wires instead of a sheet. This not only makes uh, the antenna less bulkier, but it also reduces the wind resistance that is offered by the antenna. Let us call the spacing between these thin wires as G. Okay. Now, this spacing G between the wires is made of a small fraction of wavelength that is it is approximately one tenth of lambda at the operational frequency and for wires that are parallel to the length of the dipole as it is shown in this case, the reflectivity of the grid wire surface is as good as that of a solid surface. In practice, the aperture of a corner reflector is usually between 1 to 2 wavelengths okay, as highlighted here. The length of the sides of a 90 degree corner reflector is most commonly taken to be twice the distance from the vertex. That means twice the S. L is equal to 2 times of S. For reflectors with smaller included angles, the sides are made larger. Okay. That means the overall dimension increases if alpha reduces. The feed to vertex distance that is S is usually taken to be between one third of lambda to two third of lambda. For each reflector, there is an optimum feed to vertex spacing that is feed to vertex spacing S. If the spacing becomes too small, the radiation resistance decreases and becomes comparable to the loss resistance of the system, which leads to an inefficient antenna. For very large spacing, the system produces undesirable multiple lobes and it loses its directional characteristics. It has been experimentally observed that increasing the size of the sites does not greatly affect the beam width and directivity, but it increases the bandwidth and radiation resistance. 
these are a few design considerations one should keep in mind now the height of the reflector is usually taken to be 1.2 to 1.5 times greater than the total length length is this the height is taken to be 1.2 to 1.5 times greater than the length in order to reduce radiation towards the back region from the ends of the reflector so this is all about corner reflectors so now let us move on towards parabolic reflectors 